Hello everyone, my name is Heather and welcome back to my channel. I am currently in the middle of editing this video and rather than do all the extra work involved that I feel like I need to do to make an intro without having to film an intro, I'm just gonna film an intro. So this video is how I prepare for a new semester of graduate school. I filmed all of the in-between stuff that you're about to see, except for my voiceover, uh, 10 weeks ago <laughs> because I filmed myself preparing for my summer semester, which just ended. <laughs> I actually just had my very last class this morning, so yay, super exciting. Um, I am finally sitting down to edit this video though because I was really busy with school. I'm gonna show you what I do to prepare. This involves getting new textbooks, how I save money on textbooks, as well as how I organize my syllabi and all my reading and my assignments and calendar everything. And then just a couple of extra little tidbits on what I do to prepare for a new semester. So my fall semester actually starts on August 23rd and I will be following the exact same steps. As soon as I get my syllabi for those classes, I'll be going through all of these steps and that I'm about to share in this video. So it's all the same stuff. Um, but yeah, without rambling for too long, let's get into the video. I hope you enjoy it. The first thing I do to prepare for a new semester of graduate school is order my textbooks. The way it works at my school, book lists are emailed to students roughly two weeks before the start of the semester. They can usually also be found on the student portal by searching the course name and instructor. Thus far, I have only ordered my graduate school textbooks from Amazon because it offers the most flexibility in terms of pricing options. Plus, I get free shipping with Amazon Prime for which they have a pretty decent student discount. When I refer to pricing options, I mean that depending on the book, you can either buy or rent a physical copy or the ebook version. If you purchase the physical copy, you can save money by getting it used rather than new. The benefits of physical copies for me include less strain on my eyes and the pleasant tactile sensation of reading a physical book. The cons include more clutter in my space, having to figure out what to do with the book when the semester is over, possibly having to sell it back or just decluttering or storing it for future use. Another con is having to wait for shipping, which can range depending on whether you're buying directly from an Amazon seller or from an outside seller for a used copy. A possible con of a used physical copy, especially when you're getting the cheapest one you can find, is the condition it's in, including how much it has been highlighted. This doesn't really bother me, but it's something to consider when deciding what textbooks to buy. When you rent a physical book, which I did for the first time this summer, you also have to mark your calendar and remember to return it by the due date. Luckily, Amazon makes this really easy for you, and I had Tyler drop off my rental just the other day. I held on to the box it arrived in to make it even more convenient. The benefits of ebooks include instant delivery, being able to read on multiple devices, not taking up any physical space, plus, rental ebooks are automatically returned when the rental period ends. Another benefit is being able to search the ebook for keywords and phrases and highlight without damaging anything. For me, the major con is the reading experience. Since I'm currently attending classes via Zoom, my screen fatigue is really high. The thought of reading a chapter of a textbook for an hour and a half on a screen can sometimes fill me with dread. I do have a pair of blue light blocking glasses, which has helped. The next step in preparing for a new semester happens once you start getting your syllabi. Sometimes professors email these in advance. For my summer semester, I didn't get them until the first day of classes. The way I translate a syllabus into a plan for the semester is by creating digital lists using Trello.com. I've been using Trello for work since December 2019. so. I was familiar with it and immediately started using it for school when I started this program last fall. 
This video is in no way sponsored by Trello. I just genuinely find value in the site. It's also free to use. I start by making a list titled week one and create a card in the list for every class I'm taking that semester. I then add a label to each card, assigning a color to correspond with each class. You can see I'm changing colors from previous classes to my summer classes. You can also see that there are several colors to choose from. Then I duplicate these cards and add the duplicates to the list called syllabi. This is the list in which I will import all of my syllabi documents in their respective cards and create checklists for each assigned textbook. I'll get to that later. Then I duplicate the list called week one and title it week two. I do this for as many weeks are included in the semester. Summer session is just 10 weeks, so I stopped there. For the fall, I'll need to make 16 of these lists. Next, I refer to the syllabus of each class. Here, I'm starting with my parent-child therapy class. I copy and paste the topic of each week from the syllabus into the description section of the corresponding card in the respective weeks list. You still with me? <laughs> For reading and assignments due that week, I create a checklist in the card. I copy and paste the chapters of reading and any assignments into the checklist. So just to clarify, these are the readings and assignments that will need to be completed prior to attending class that week, especially because the readings will likely be discussed during that class time. On weeks that I have an assignment due, anything outside of reading, I add my red label to the card to indicate that I'll need to be turning something in that week. Back in the syllabi list, I create a checklist for each textbook and list out all the chapters of the book for me to check off throughout the semester. It is rare that every chapter gets assigned during a semester and sometimes chapters are assigned more than once in a semester. So I like to keep track of what I've read already. If it's getting assigned again, I know I only have to skim it rather than reread verbatim. These cards are also where I attach the actual syllabus document for reference. Once I've imported all the syllabi and copied and pasted all the topics and assignments, I move on to the next step of dispersing my reading and assignments one week at a time. This step gets repeated on a weekly basis during the semester. I create a list in Trello for every day of the week. These lists get relabeled with the correct dates and migrated over as the days go by. This is how I know what reading and assignments I hope to accomplish each day. It helps me feel less intimidated by all the work I have to manage through all the classes. At the start of this semester, I generally go directly to my week two list because it's very rare that anything is due the first week of class. I copy each task in the checklist and create a card labeled with the color that corresponds to the class the tasks are for. If the task is also an assignment, like a presentation or a paper, I add the red assignment due label. I also separate chapters of textbooks into individual cards because it is unlikely that I will do more than one chapter of reading in one sitting. I feel more accomplished when I can break things up. Once I've turned all the week's tasks into cards, I drag them to the days I think I'll be able to get them done. Sometimes I overbook myself, and sometimes I find myself getting way ahead of schedule. By the middle of the semester, I'm usually about a week ahead of the syllabus in terms of what reading and assignments I'm working on. I like to have this week as a buffer in case I get sick, either physically or mental health-wise. It prevents me from ever feeling like I'm behind. The next thing I do is create a loose study schedule based on my class and work schedule. For the sake of this video, I hid my work schedule for privacy reasons. This is never a hard and fast schedule, but I like to visualize the days and times of day that I can see myself working on school. During the spring and summer semesters, Tuesdays were big school work days for me though I never did schoolwork from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. straight, but seeing that block of time really helped to hold me accountable. I do about one to two hours in the late morning, take a break, then get in a couple more hours in the late afternoon. 
with my clinical hours starting in the fall, even before adding in these blocks, my schedule is already jam-packed. Between class time, clinical hours work, and rehearsing my next play, I will probably be doing all my schoolwork on Saturdays and Sundays, which is not preferred, but you gotta do what you gotta do. The next thing I do at the beginning of the semester is write out a loose meal plan. I may not actually stick to it, but I think this is more psychological than practical for me. I'm usually a bit more anxious and stressed going into a new semester, so writing down a meal plan helps me feel like I have one less thing to think about that first week of school. It also inspires me to do some meal prep at the beginning of the semester, which I actually filmed with Tyler and uploaded at the time, back when I had time to edit a video within the same week of filming. The next thing I do before a semester starts is get in some reading for pleasure because I know it's going to be textbooks and journal articles and nothing else for the next 10 to 16 weeks. During school, I hit my reading threshold fairly quickly and never want to read more than I have to, even if it's for fun. So I try to take advantage of my time off between semesters to get some fun reading in. The last thing I do to prepare for a new semester of grad school is practice some mindfulness and gratitude for the present moment. I remind myself why I am doing this. I practice gratitude for the privilege of higher education. I get excited about all the things I'm about to learn that will continue to build on knowledge gained in previous semesters. This step is so important to me, who is constantly thinking about my future, about the next step, impatient to get on to the next thing, the next achievement. I want to get through all the difficulty to move on to the next challenge or the next break. It is important that I meditate on the present moment and how thankful I am to be where I am today. I'm exactly where I need to be, and it's going to take as much time as it needs to take. And there are so many great things about being in grad school that I'm going to miss when it's over. Whether you are in high school, undergrad, grad school, starting your career, considering retirement, or maybe you're still exploring your paths, you are right where you need to be. I encourage you to take inventory of the benefits of where you are right now and turn the things you want to change into plans. There is both pleasure in taking action and in doing nothing. Decide what is best for you, this situation, in this moment. Trust yourself. Give yourself some grace. Celebrate the moment. You've got this. Breathe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I prepare for a new semester of graduate school. If you wanna see more videos on this topic about how I, I know, motivate myself to get all of my reading done, how do I get assignments completed and turned in as early as I do, because I'm usually about a week or so ahead of schedule. I am now a year into my master's program, so I've got a whole other year of the master's program to go and then I'll probably be going into the doctorate program. So I'm gonna be in graduate school for at least another year, possibly three more years, we shall see. But if there's anything you wanna know about my journey, how I got into graduate school, how I do it, how I work at the same time, what's going on, what's the story, um, let me know down in the comments below. I rhyme sometimes. Nah. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please be sure and give it a thumbs up because that is how I know you liked it. <laughs> uh, and yeah. I will see you guys in my next video, whatever that may be. I also just filmed a cleaning video today, so that'll be going up at some point if it isn't already. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.